Marquette, the mirror image at 1-6 in one, but Marquette coming off an impressive 4-2 victory over Seton Hall last weekend. Both teams with strong players in the goal, JT Marcinkowski for the Hoyas and Luis, Luis Barraza for the Marquette Golden Eagles, both considered the two top goalkeepers uh, in the country. And so we are set for an exciting afternoon of soccer on the Big East Digital Network. The Hoyas and the Golden Eagles coming up next. This is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Good afternoon, soccer fans. Welcome to live action on the Big East Digital Network. We're at Shaw Field on a blustery fall day in Washington, D.C., where the homestanding Hoyas of Georgetown take on the visiting Marquette Golden Eagles Dan Helfrich here, flying solo in the Shawfield press box, and both teams view this as a pivotal matchup early in the season. Both teams one and one in that middle of the bunched Big East Conference standings. The Hoyas coming off a big road win, a 2-1 comeback win over DePaul with both goals scored by freshman Derek Dotson. Meanwhile, Marquette, their first and only win of the year last year, and it was an impressive one, 4-2 over the visitors from Seton Hall. Marquette's most important striker, Daniel Stepanek, scoring his first two goals of the game in that contest, and he will be very important for Marquette, alongside the dynamic midfielder, Luca Purpa, who was a Big East all-freshman performer last year with 26 points on the year. The Hoyas, of course, anchored by the spine of the team. It's Chris Lemma in the center of the midfield, Peter Schropp and Brennan McDonough in the center of the back and all everything goalkeeper. There he is, the fluorescent one, JT Marcinkowski, coming off a spring where he played with the U.S. national team in the U-20 World Cup in Korea. The Hoyas in the new kits this year, the gray. Marquette in the navy blue. Marquette, of course, coached by Louis Bennett. More than a dozen years in Wisconsin. Hoyas by Brian Weiss. This has been a fairly one-sided rivalry through the years. Marquette just winning once in the 14 previous contests. However, four of the last six have gone to overtime, and we'll see how that plays out. Georgetown and Marquette have both played in a clash of styles in many of their contests so far this year. This will not be the case. Both teams like to build out of the back and possess the ball. There's Luis Barraza in the blue goalkeeper uniform. Barasa, considered by many the best goalie in the conference with his feet. 
And we'll certainly see two good goalkeepers there. McCabe trying to free Dotson, but Barasa off his line to get it. Both of Georgetown's uh, preferred starting strikers unavailable to start this game. Zach Knudsen and Achara, both nursing lower body injuries. We may see one or both of them later in the game. Here's Zayats moving to his right. And Montez gets a touch now wide to Kyle Zayats. Zayats will cut inside. Zayats, the junior from Staples, Connecticut. And now Sean O'Hearn. O'Hearn wide to Ethan Lochner. Now into the feet of Dotson. Dotson peels away and sees the overlap from Sean O'Hearn, the freshman on his left foot. Sean elects not to take a touch and it'll go out of bounds. It's actually over the head of Noah Heim. I misidentified the goalkeeper. It'll be the red shirt freshman from Cambridge, Wisconsin, getting the start today. Heim, a highly regarded recruit from the Wisconsin area. And you wonder there if O'Hearn could have taken a touch, a lot of space in front of him, and that errant cross with a lot of space will be one he wishes he had over. There's Shrop winning the aerial battle. Now Zayats and Brendan Skidder, the physically imposing center back for Marquette, will reset the Golden Eagle attack. That center, center midfielder Ruben Sanchez will be playing that holding midfield position. Georgetown, impressive in each of its last two games coming from behind. First against Stony Brook, a 2-0 deficit overcome, and then against DePaul on the road as they overcame an early penalty kick to win 2-1. Meanwhile, Marquette early ball looking for Patrick Segris goes wide, and it'll be a Georgetown throw in deep in their end. The referee for today's contest is Leland Grant. Marquette's roster full of freshmen, 10 freshmen on the 20-person roster, so a 24-person roster, nearly half the roster in freshmen as Marquette rebuilds from what was a bit of a golden era with the coach's son, Louis Bennett III. Layoff looking for Segrist. That'll be Dylan Nielsen nodded out of bounds. And our first look at Grant Owens. There's Owens wearing number 17 in blue. Owens, the team leader in goals with three on the season. Meanwhile, Georgetown paced by Achara with five. But Achara, who got those five in the first four matches of the year, sitting out, at least not starting for his fifth consecutive game. And certainly it is been a thorn in the Hoya attack side, but it has also given players an opportunity to contribute. And Derek Dotson has risen to the occasion. Dotson with three goals on the season and an assist. Here's Chris Lemma. Lemma, the heartbeat of the Hoyas in the middle of the park. Lemma, the senior out of the Red Bulls Academy. More and more responsibility for Chris this year in his senior season on both ends of the field. As we'll see Chris take all restarts in the attacking, you know, 40% of the field. So again, for Marquette, it's Noah Heim in the goal as Luis Barasa, the normal starter, unable to go. Here's McDonough with it. Now it's Ethan Lochner. Lochner earning big minutes in his junior season, Lochner actually got the Hoyas season off to an early start with a goal in the first 15 minutes of the season and a victory over a crosstown rival American. Here's Dotson against Skinner. Now it's Lochner. He miscommunicates with Declan McCabe, the senior, and it'll be out of bounds. Again, Marquette coming in at 1-6-1 one, one on the season. A tough, a tough early season schedule. Georgetown at 6-1-1, one and, one. and the starters for the Hoyas today, if you take a look, it's Brian Weiss has had interchangeable parts. This is, though, the preferred back four for the first time in many weeks as O'Hearn, McDonough, Schrapp, and Nielis from left to right across the back. There's Marquette's left back, Christian Albello.
Haim has preferred left foot Eau Claire, won strongly by O'Hearn, but Ruben Sanchez for the Golden Eagles will clean things up in the middle. Sanchez out wide to Segrist. Segrist closely monitored by Georgetown freshman Jacob Montez. There's the first touch of the game for Luca Purpa. Purpa widely considered one of the two or three most dangerous two-way midfielders in the conference. And we'll see if Marquette can find him in the seams that he loves to get into to create havoc. JT Marzinkowski, Georgetown's junior goalie's first clear. Ends up at the feet of McCabe. He'll go wide to the speedy Lochner. Lochner sees runners in the box. Lochner dispossessed, though. And Marquette will counter. Jack Albert's leading that counter. Here's Purpa again, and you see Purpa's quick feet. Lemma, meanwhile, disrupting S Sanchez. But Sanchez ends up with it. And now Marquette with a steam, and now the sun-drenched Shawfield. Good layoff there from Diego Nunez. Battle in the corner flag. Ball worked back to Sanchez. He'll clip an early looping ball to the back post. Nealis heads away as the onrushing Segrist caused him a challenge. Marquette, good possession early. This is our first look there at Connor Alba. Alba, who mans that midfield with Purpa and Sanchez. Marquette, as we expected, looking confident on the ball. Georgetown, no midweek game here midway through the college soccer season. Marquette had the crosstown derby against Milwaukee where they fell 2-0 in a game they played quite well. Here's Alba. He can't connect with Purpa, I don't know. Be out of play. Here's the rangy Dotson. Dotson against Albeo. Dotson cuts in. Good early ball to McCabe. Diving save, rebound, and a goal. It's Ethan Lochner on the rebound of Declan McCabe's shot. Derek Dotson did the work down the right side. The senior McCabe hit it low and hard. Heim save. Fell right to Lochner, and Ethan Lochner's second of the year for the Hoyas give them a ninth-minute lead. And Marquette had a bunch of the possession early, but you see the dangerous freshman, Derek Dotson, with pace getting behind Albe Albeo. And Albello could not stay with him. McCabe did well to direct that cross on net. And then Lochner have what will be the easiest goal of his college career. And the Hoyas have just what they wanted, an early first half lead. And as we talked about, with the absence of Georgetown's two top preferred strikers, Knutson and Achara, it's caused the depth to be tested. Meanwhile, drop dispossessed. In alone a shot and the equalizer for Marquette as Georgetown dispossessed. And Nunez rockets it above Marcinkowski. And just like that, 30 seconds after the Hoyas take the lead, Marquette answers back. A sloppy bit of defensive play and then the enterprising Diego Nunez. Makes it one to one. And Louis Bennett off his seat. Thrilled with the effort there by the Golden Eagles. And meanwhile, the Georgetown bench looking frustrated and in disbelief as the early lead disappears. And while it was a gift given to Nunez, boy, did he do well finishing that. Hitting it hard and above Marcinkowski. And such an important goal for the Golden Eagles, who've struggled throughout the year. They go down early and yet show the guile and resilience that Bennett teams have been known for through the years.
Good bit of skill there. By Marquette's Daniel Stepanek. And now it's Stefan Baim back to Heim. Good composure by the freshman goalkeeper. It's now Brendan Skinner. He'll go out wide to Albello. And Marquette does not look an intimidated team here on the road. Georgetown undefeated at home this year. And both teams with everything to play for. Lochner in a foot race. Heim off his line. And he'll clear. Both teams have everything to play for at one and one in the standing. So important as you build the resume throughout the year to get off to a good start in the conference so that you're playing for seeding and position and not late in the year wondering if you'll earn a berth into that Big East tournament. And a foul whistled on McCabe near midfield. McCabe, the senior from Rivers, Massachusetts. Grant will have a word here. And you see McCabe, not much there in the challenge. The right call. Lemma tries to slip Dotson in. But early we see really good field awareness by Noah Heim, the goalkeeper, as he was well off his line. and something you have to be prepared for with a player like Dotson circulating in the middle. There's a chest from Montez in traffic. Looping right-footed ball, looking for McKay, but Heim again off his line. So it's 1-1 here in the 12th minute. It was Ethan Lochner collecting the rebound of a McCabe shot for the Hoyas. And then just 30 seconds later, a turnover by the Hoyas led to a blast from Diego Nunez. And that has us knotted at one. Segris, the beneficiary of a good tackle from Albello. Now Nealis... Good tackle. He'll cut inside. Nealis head up looking for Dotson. Ball deflected, but the Hoy is still with it near the top of the box. Nealis in traffic. And Marquette content to clear. Good first touch from O'Hare. Finds Lochner. The goal scorer for the Hoyas cuts inside. Now back out to Sean O'Hearn. O'Hearn finds Lochner again. He'll keep it in play. He's on the end line. Looping ball to the back post looking for Montez. But over his outstretched right foot. Good combination play between Lochner and O'Hearn. But the Hoy is unable to generate a chance on Heim. Here we see the composure from Lochner. Picked his head up. The scoop jacks into the back post, but no one there. McCabe against Segrist. McCabe cuts inside, left-footed cross is blocked by El Bello. Georgetown. Continues the territorial advantage. Neal is cross blocked. Bouncing ball in front of Heim and cleared. And the referee spots a foul on Lochner. There's a good look at Louis Bennett. Shouting in his rogue. And again, Bennett certainly pleased with the response from the Golden Eagles to that early Georgetown goal. Several Marquette regulars also unavailable today. So both teams... Testing their depth. A really young team for Marquette. Here's speaking of young players, here's Montez, the exciting Hoya freshman. Montez sees Lochner to his left. He'll find him. The return pass, finding Montez. He'll keep it in play. Good bit of skill. And that'll be O'Hearn, freshman to freshman. O'Hearn, right footed clearance, right to Lochner. Shin guard pass to Zayats. And then a looping, let's call it a shot, that went higher than it did far. And Heim not troubled. Segrist, good skill to get by Montez. But then a good bit of cover defending from Kyle Zayats, Georgetown's junior. And that's something Zayats has done well all year long in that central midfield position. Second ball winning, covering defense. Always would like to see Zayats a little more involved in the attack. Bame and Lochner battle. The result to be a throw in for the Hoyas. Much to the chagrin of 
Stefan Bame, the junior from Germany, a transfer from Florida International. O'Hearn sees Dotson in a crease, tries to lay it off, but easily cleared by Albello. Marcinkowski certainly frustrated to concede a first half goal after his teammates staked him to a 1 0 lead, but nothing he could do about the blast from Nunez. 16th minute at Shawfield. Nice early fall day and a nice early touch from Montez. He'll cut inside. McCabe is onside. McCabe's alone. McCabe has scored. And it's a beautiful goal by Declan McCabe. And a pretty service from the freshman Jacob Montez. And a track beat at Shaw Field is underway. And what a ball there by Montez. The first touch from McCabe was so clean. And the patience there from the senior to see which way Heim was leaning. And Georgetown back in front by one. And when the coaches will look at that on replay, they will love that positive attacking first touch by Montez. And they'll also love the first touch by McCabe. McCabe's been involved in both goals. His shot was saved that led to Lochner's opener. And now McCabe himself scoring his first of the year. And just like that, the Hoy is back in front. McDonough, early ball, looking for the goal scorer, McCabe. Declan battling Segrist. Nealis. A good piece of defending there by Grant Owens, the redshirt junior. Owens, a transfer from St. Louis University. McCabe against Albello. Albello defends, but we'll have our first corner of the game here in the 16th minute. And it'll be the familiar left foot of Chris Lemma. Lemma hits the Hoyas' corners from each side. It'll be an in-swinger from this side. Near post ball. Flicked by Dotson. Back post. A swing and a miss by Peter Schropp. He wasn't expecting that deft touch from Dotson. Lemma sees runners at the back post looking for McDonough. McDonough will challenge Heim. And Heim punches away with his right fist. And leads to another corner, a terrific ball by Lemma, trying to pick out the junior defender, Captain McDonough. And you see McDonough lurking, and Heim well off his line there. To save the Golden Eagles from conceding a third. And just as we said a moment ago, Lemma this time from the opposite side of the field, it'll be an outswinger. Back post, looking for Schropp. Headed away, though, by Owens. And now Marquette will counter through Stepanek. Stepanek thought he was fouled. The Marquette bench thought he was fouled. But referee Leland Grant <laughs> says play on it. He had a good vantage point right near on that sliding challenge from Kyle Zayetz. So Lochner and McCabe, the goal scorers for Georgetown. Nunez for Marquette. Meanwhile, cleared out of play by Brendan Skinner. Skinner, the freshman from Canada, British Columbia. The Marquette roster is about half the players from Wisconsin and half the players from many other places and many other continents. Marcinkowski to fellow junior captain McDonough. Great honor for both those juniors to be elected captains in their junior season. And again, for those just joining us, that is not Luis Barasa in the goal for Marquette. It's Noah Heim, the redshirt freshman. Albello 
trying to pick out Sanchez. Lemma wins the ball well. He sees McCabe to his right. McCabe elects to not serve early, instead go back to Montez. Cheeky ball, headed away, and finally cleared. But Georgetown right back in. Lemma looking for Dotson, but Heim able to get to it. Georgetown finding all kinds of space on both wings. And Marquette's going to need to make some tactical adjustments or Georgetown's going to continue to get behind them and have the ball in dangerous places to serve. It's great to have you joining us here on the Big East Digital Network as we flip the calendar to October and the action really heats up. And then, of course, the Big East Tournament will start in the first week of November. Both these teams hoping to play in that tournament. Heim, errant ball as he was pressured by McCabe. That's freshman Sean O'Hearn. Started all but one match this year for the Hoyas. O'Hearn, the freshman from Montville, Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, Luca Purpa, the exciting Marquette midfielder, again, having trouble finding service. And that's the thing. Marquette needs him to be the engine of their attack. But if they can't find him, it's going to be hard for the Golden Eagles to possess the ball enough to threaten Georgetown. Meanwhile, the Hoyas will be content at moments in this game to slow things down as they are here as we approach the halfway point of the first half. Dotson gets behind Albello. Good early ball to McCabe. McCabe back to Dotson. Dotson, smart ball, top of the box. Hit over by Montez. But the Hoya staff will like to see that combination play as McCabe and Dotson, the two reserve strikers, start to find uh, a rapport with one another. A lot of our viewers pointing out that I talked about the calendar moving to October when it's still in September. I know that. But we are moving into October. Here's Sanchez. Bothered by Dotson. Dotson will win it and lay it off for Lemma. Lemma to Lochner, but the weight of that pass poor. And Marquette's Alba able to win the ball. And let's see if the Eagles can counter. Georgetown able to slow down that counterattack. Marquette with a throw on the far side of Shaw Field. Georgetown doing significant renovations to this field. Four years ago, it's become an attractive place to play and watch soccer. Lochner sees an overlap from McCabe, but Skinner reads it. He'll clear. Ball, however, out of play. And it'll be a Georgetown throw. 22 minutes remain in the first half. Goals from McCabe and Lochner for the Hoyas. And a goal for Diego Nunez of Marquette are the difference. You see the Georgetown strikers putting pressure on this Marquette defense, believing that under pressure they'll struggle to keep the ball. And you've seen many times that resulting like it did there in a turnover. Nealis, good bit of skill. Lemus intercedes, but it'll go out of play for a goal kick. The only blemishes on Georgetown's record this year it would have to be considered a good tie on the road at Joseph Maroney Stadium on the campus of the University of Connecticut. UConn playing very well since that game. 
and then a difficult overtime loss at Xavier to open the Big East Conference season. Marquette quickly up the right side. It's a nice pirouette from Brody Krozel. Krozel wearing number eight, the dynamic senior who's made a difference off the bench this year. Meanwhile, our first look at Jack Alberts, also a senior. Heim looking for Nunez, header one by Schrapp. Bame doesn't see a runner he likes, so he'll possess. Now Sanchez. Ruben Sanchez, the junior from Frankfurt, Illinois, dispossessed by Zayats. And Zayats, calm possession as Hoyas worked through Lemma. Lemma, good footwork to find O'Hearn. Hoyas pulsing this left side. Now O'Hearn sees a run from Dotson he likes, lays it back to McCabe. And that ambitious left-footed effort sails over everything. And with that, a joy erupts in the Shawfield crowd as Achara returns to action for the first time in, since September 9th. Achara, who led the country in goals when he was hurt, has five and still leads the Hoyas in points. And Achara sporting the knee brace on the right side. But has felt more and more comfortable as this week has ensued with that brace. And he strikes fear in the hearts of Big East opposing defenses. Here's Krozel. Krozel dynamic near the end line. And he'll win Marquette a corner kick as number eight, Brody Krozel, has looked very good since entering. And Purpa will take Marquette's first corner. Purpa, again, 26 points in his freshman year just a year ago. Only one point so far this year. Looping ball to the back post. And the Whistler Skinner for a foul. Marcinkowski sees a run he likes from Achara. He's going to force Bame to head it backwards, but Heim well positioned near the top of his goalkeeper box. And so important minutes here, the 20 minutes at Achara looks like he'll play in the first half, um, trying to regain both form and fitness as he couldn't have been more red hot to start the season. And obviously for a player that paces among his not among his, it is his primary elite skill. We'll see how the knee brace affects it. Poor layoff there from Achara. Good piece of defending from Alba. Now Marquette counters as Alberts tries to find Alba. He battles Nealis for us. Alba's going to get to it. And then good recovery there from McDonough. He'll find Achara. Achara lays off to O'Hearn. And Georgetown once again will attack down the left. Achara, positive touch into the penalty area. Lays the ball off, blocked by Sanchez. And Ruben Sanchez has covered a lot of territory on Shaw Field for the Golden Eagles. Twenty-ninth minute of play at Shaw Field. Lochner in McCabe for the Hoyas. Nunez for the Golden Eagles. In the game, the Hoyas have Dominated possession-wise, probably 80-20, 85-15. McDonough indecisive in that ball and so easily won by Segrist. Now Stepanek finds Alba, but McDonough steps in front of a rare foray forward for Brendan McDonough, who thought he was fouled. The ref gave the dive signal, and Nunez now with it. And Brendan McDonough says to the ref, I don't even know how to dive. 
McDonough still confirmed with the referee. McDonough says, that's the first time I've been in the attacking third in two and a half seasons. I wasn't going to take a dive. There's a good look at Patrick Segrist. Segrist, an important player on the left side of midfield. Sophomore from Streamwood, Illinois. Lochner wins the ball. It's a three on two for the Hoyas. Achar is in the middle. Lochner tries to find him, but they can't connect. And Lochner perhaps making that decision a smidge early as he had both McCabe and Lochner and the Hoyas don't even get a shot off from that three on two. There's a good look at Achara and a good look at that multifaceted knee brace, which can't be all that fun to wear. And the Hoyas, with under 15 minutes to go in the first half, will remove both wide midfielders as Montez and Lochner come out, replaced by Mason and freshman Jack Beer. So, Davey Mason, the sophomore. A local product from Bethesda, Maryland. Beer, the freshman from Thornwood, New York. Beer hit an absolute rocket off the intersection of the post and the crossbar at DePaul on last Saturday. Thought he had scored his first career goal, but the iron was unkind. Trap early ball, looking for Mason. Heim again off his line. And again, the field awareness from Heim, very impressive. And the through balls that are going to end up anywhere near the front of his box, it appears he has those covered. Krozel, who's been terrific since entering, battling, and they'll say it's off of Krozel's feet. He can't believe it. And it'll be a goal kick. For JT Marcinkowski. Marcinkowski, a terrific youth national team career that culminated in his selection to the U20 World Cup. JT did not see the field in the World Cup as first choice goalkeeper Jonathan Klinsman played every minute of every game, but a terrific experience for the San Jose Earthquakes Academy product who has an incredibly bright future in the sport. McDonough, early ball. Alberts clears, but he clears right into the path of Beer. Good first time ball to Achara. Achara, bicycle pass to Beer. Beer sees Mason on his left, instead he'll shoot across his body. Heim with it. And the referee will say Achara was offsides on that shot. That was the equivalent of a no-look shot by Beer. Everyone in the crowd, including all of us in the press book, thought the ball was going to go wide to Mason. Instead, he shot across his body here. And Heim did well to save that. And Achara apparently offsides when the shot was taken. So Noah Heim thrown into the fire here today. Time's first minutes of the season. Here's Beer. Beer cutting inside, likes the run from Lemma. Good footwork from Chris to turn to the left side. Now he'll play wide to Mason. Mason clips the ball to the back post. Beer heads it. But Segrist got to it as well, and it was able to come out of harm's way for the Golden Eagles. Dylan Nealis retrieves. Now wide to Jack Beer, who looks active early. Diagonal run from Achara. He's on side against Skinner. Skinner blocks that pass, and now Alberts clears. Couldn't quite connect with Marquette's goal scorer, Diego Nunez. 
Georgetown will slow things down with under 12 to play. There's a good look at the sophomore Dylan Nealis. Rugged and athletic right back with all kinds of pace. Georgetown stylistically asks a lot of its outside fullbacks. Both sides of the field. In fact, it's a position that has produced several pros, including Keegan Rosenberry and Josh Turnley, who are playing for the Philadelphia Union and LA Galaxy 2, respectively. Speaking of those two, while well, they aren't able to join today, their teammates will be honored at halftime the five-year anniversary of the 2012 team at Georgetown that represented the Big East Conference in the College Cup and ultimately in the National Championship game. Here's Dylan Nealis. He sees Mason to his left. He'll play it into his feet, his preferred left foot, and the service knocked out for a corner kick. <sighs> that is Georgetown's lone College Cup appearance in program history on the men's side, the women reaching the College Cup just a year ago. Lemma to take the corner. Good ball, dangerous, headed away by Alberts. Beer will battle Alba for it and win it. It's back out to Lemma, sees runners. Skinner blocks and Heim collects that deflected ball. As this game is worn on, Marquette unable to test Marcinkowski. And you think for Marquette to get a second goal, it's going to perhaps have to be off a restart. Beer tried to find Achara, but the ball a bit ambitious, and Heim easily able to collect. Bame attacking, now Sanchez. Albert sees a run from Alba, plays him a good ball, but Beer and Zayats combine to win it, and Georgetown on an aggressive counter. But the weight of the pass from Beer was poor, and Marquette will try to run the other way through Segrist. Now Alba, good run. Stepanek now to Perpa, finally with a touch in the attacking third. Perpa back to Stepanek. Wide to Segrist. Left-footed shot saved by Marcinkowski. And the turnover by Jack Beer led to Marquette's best chance in the run of play since their goal. Beer looking for Achara. Heim off his line. And again, the Hoyas continue to look for direct balls since Achara has entered. For those just joining, Achara back on the field for the first time since September 9th. He's about 10 minutes into his return appearance. Trying to knock off the rust of three and a half weeks on the shelf. There's Bame for Marquette. And McCabe, an acrobatic fall. He'll elect to play the free kick early to Beer. Georgian likes the four on four they have. Beer will cut inside. Now out wide, McCabe leaves it smartly for Mason. Early ball looking for McCabe. And Skinner did a terrific job defending there. As Mason played a smart first-time ball looking for McCabe. Alba showing good strength against Lemma. Alba, great feet. Crafty ball looking for Krozel. He'll get to it at the end line. And he'll win a corner. Alba showing good lower body strength there to ward off the challenge from Lemma. And then Krozel's pace. Able to win a corner. There's a good look there at number eight, Brady Krozel. And you see the strength here. It takes a lot of lower body strength and the low center of gravity of Connor Alba, the sophomore from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Meanwhile, the Hoyas on this corner bring in Edson Martinez. He'll replace Declan McCabe. Near post run. 
won by Nealis, headed back by Skinner into the box. Lots of traffic in front of Marcinkowski. Skinner still with it. Now it's Sanchez. Back post run to Segrist. Lots of traffic in front of Marcinkowski. Nealis heads away again. Marquette still in the Georgetown end as the Hoyas can't clear. And finally, O'Hearn able to get it to midfield. But not for long as Bame steps forward and Marquette with a little bit of the ball and it's some bright forward touches. The overlap there from Stefan Bame, but he's disrupted by O'Hearn. Now the Hoyas counter, first touch of Edson Martinez. Martinez, the flashy central midfielder, brings a dynamic flair when he enters the game. Direct ball, Achara, a good positive touch now to Martinez. And Edson's first attacking half of the field touches. Content to possess with O'Hearn and Mason. Mason one-on-one -on -one against Bame. Mason to the end line. Well defended, though, by Stefan Bame. And then terrific bit of triangle passing there by Marquette. Escapes the Georgetown end. Now it's Krozel who's moved to the left side. Krozel arguably the best Marquette Golden Eagle in this first half. Here he is, one-on-one -on -one against Nealis. Step over, left-footed service to the back post. O'Hearn reacted late. Georgetown can't clear, it's Alba. Stepanek now back to Alba. Stepanek. And the tackle by Mason wins it, but it'll be a throw in with under five minutes remaining in this end-to-end -end first half. Georgetown's had the better of the play and the 2-1 lead thanks to goals from McCabe and Lochner. Nunez, the goal scorer for the Golden Eagles. Purpa, a purposeful touch back to Sanchez. Now wide to Alba, one-on-one -on -one against Mason. Service is blocked. And then Beer able to find Achara. Georgetown more ragged here in the last 10 minutes since a wave of substitutions. Fascinating to see the career series record between these two teams. Georgetown 11-1-2 against Marquette. Last year's game was a tie, but it's funny. You just have some team's numbers. And then Purpa fouled clinically by McDonough. And Marquette will have a free kick about 40 yards from JT Marcinkowski. Goal. So an interesting opportunity for Marquette here as Purpa, one of the best servers of the, the ball in the conference, has lots of players at the back post. He'll play a little driven ball, and it didn't get over Chris Lemon. So Marquette not able to generate a chance there. Martin, Martinez will find Achara. Achara can't quite get going, still battling for it. Now it's Purpa. Purpa, good strength now, Alba. Under three minutes play in the first half. Alba will peel away from Martinez. And you can see Marquette has some quality when they're able to have the space to play. Just haven't had enough of it to generate a lot of chances here. It's Krozel again, very dangerous. Now Purpa. Alba's pass easily cut out by Zayats, who's moved out wide.
Georgetown in more of a 4-5-1 since McCabe entered with Jack Beer playing as a withdrawn striker. Sean O'Hearn, good ball, penetrating to Beer's feet. Beer clips the ball to Achara. He did not hold his run, and he's offsides. And again, Achara seems to be opting for runs behind the defense and trying to, instead of trying to come back and perhaps get a few combinations touches. Stepaniak lays off for Krozel. Krozel, early ball, looking for Segrist against Nealis. Dylan easily wins that. And Zayats clears it into the stands for a souvenir with just 80 seconds remaining in the first half. Georgetown, the better side in this first half and the deserved one goal lead. But Marquette's looked the better team the last six or seven minutes. Alba wide to Segrist. Segrist, good dangerous ball headed by Neal is straight up in the air. And it'll be a corner kick as the clock ticks under one minute at Shaw Field. Please stay with us at halftime on the Big East Digital Network. We'll have a terrific feature recapping the week, the week in Big East college soccer. Stepanek for Marquette's second corner of the half. Marcinkowski easily grabs. And with 30 seconds remaining, Marcinkowski will try to give Achara a run. Over his head, however. And it appears we may be headed into halftime with this, the score line. Georgetown got off to the one nothing lead. It was Ethan Lochner's second of the year. Then Marquette answered through Diego Nunez just 30 seconds later. But then a terrific finish by McCabe off a feed from Jacob Montez. Made the difference, and that's where we stand now at halftime. It's Georgetown 2, Marquette 1. Again, back with a feature on Big East Soccer, and then we'll have highlights and stats before the second half kicks off at Shaw Field. Georgetown 2, Marquette 1 at the break. Time here at Shaw Field on the campus of Georgetown University. Georgetown leads Marquette two to one, and it was an exciting week of Biggie soccer action. Let's take a look. We are joined by Rob Stone in our Midtown Manhattan studios for a little Big East Digital Network Top 5. Rob? Soccer. I want soccer. You're giving me soccer play. Soccer. Five of them. Men's and women's Big East soccer. Ten games on the Big East Digital Network. Here were the I want to start. Players. I want to start with Butler and my dear friend Paige Monahan. <laughs> Let's do it. She's going to score. I've been told she's going to score from distance on the mm. turf. What do you got for me, Paige? Ooh. Ooh. Near post upper 90. Paige. Let her rip, kid. Well, more replays. How many cameras do you guys have at this yeah. game? 12. 12, 14. sure. That's well done, Paige. All right, Quattro, the Hambone, St. John's Xavier. Sent in, back post. Is that the freshman Jack Shearer? It was. It is. He had two goals that game. No relation to Alan Shearer. I understand. Good, good soccer reference. And more multiple replays. Yes. Well done. All of them. <laughs> All right, Jack. Outside of the right boot, Georgetown's Caitlin Farrell. Wow, what a... 
Get in there! It is! Caitlin with the lefty oh, death God. little touch. Mm. She was looking that way the whole the whole play. Well done, Caitlin. Uh, is this Eric Dick, the butler keeper? You know it. Yes, Eric! That is a left leg denial. Mm. More from Eric. Woo! Again. One more look. One more look. Oh, Big East champion it. last year. Look at that knowledge, John Panther. Well done. Number one, Xavier Creighton. We all know what happened, don't we? The flick and the goal. Five seconds left in the game. Had a good job, Lady Musketeers. It's a cup of chili. Mmm. Maybe some Fritos on it too. Oh. Some cheddar cheese. Mm. Some onions. Just to have the spaghetti. I onions. like it. Onions. <laughs> Heartbreaker. Who are they playing? I can't tell. Creighton. Creighton. Creighton Blue Jays. Sorry, to, Blue Jays. To BL. Top five soccer highlights of the week. I love it. Good job, Big East. <laughs>Let's take out the rest of women's soccer. League opener, all 10 teams in action. DePaul and Seton Hall went to double overtime. That ended 1-1. We mentioned Xavier getting by Creighton 2-1. Georgetown, you saw the Caitlin Farrell goal. That made it 1-0. Butler rolls past Marquette 3-0. In Providence, Villanova, hard fought. But the Friars, 1-0 win for Providence. Big East men's soccer also had a full slate last weekend. Let's check out some of those results, some hard-fought matches. We just saw Providence women's soccer. Providence men's soccer had a great battle against Butler, falling 1-0. Georgetown taking care of business against DePaul, 2-1. And then this is the result of the weekend, folks. St. John's, the Red Storm at Belson Stadium, 3-0 against a ranked Xavier Musketeers team. Watch out for the Red Storm. That is a statement win in conference play. Marquette goals aplenty for the Golden Eagles, 4-2 over Seton Hall. And Creighton posting a shutout, 2-0 against Nova. Now that is the second weekend of play. So let's see how the standings look. Again, it's early. This is fluid and is going to move all over the place. But Butler and St. John's, the only two teams undefeated in conference play. It is interesting to know. And there is a lot of time left in this Big East men's soccer season. Providence was unanimously selected to win the conference. Shows you the depth and the toughness of the league this year. They're down at number nine with only one point through two games. And then it is very up and down from one to ten. Everybody with a shot very early in Big East men's soccer. Also, volleyball was in full action this weekend in conference play. Again, everybody just getting into the swing of things when it comes to Big East play. Let's check out the volleyball standings, and I think we know who's going to be at the top. Marquette, Providence, and Creighton doing a great job rolling a really strong non-conference schedule right into conference play. And then again, it's early, so a lot of teams battling in 500 there in the middle when it comes to Big East Volleyball. I'll shout out Seton Hall. They've got a good matchup this weekend coming up against Creighton in what should be a good test for the Pirates at home that game on the Big East Digital Network. All right, it's time. We're going to wrap it all up as we do every week with our national rankings and how about Big East men's soccer. They're the story this week. Three teams in the top 25. Creighton, that win against Villanova, 2-0, gets them into the top 25. Butler beating Providence, number 22. And Georgetown, they've been leading the pack in non-conference play after two top 20 wins. That's why they're number 14. Also ranked in women's soccer, the Hoyas. Number 17, Butler Marquette receiving votes. Volleyball, Creighton, they've been ranked all season. Continue to do so at number 14. And field hockey, gotta love the Huskies. Number one, as they've been for the last couple of weeks. This marks three in a row just a powerhouse when it comes to NCAA field hockey and the Huskies. Well, what a week it was for fall sports last weekend, and I know another full slate this week on the Big East Digital Network. This has been your Big East Digital Network fall sports update. I'm Jay Alter. We'll see you next week. We are joined by Rob Stone and our... It's halftime on a sun-drenched Shaw Field on the campus of Georgetown University where Georgetown has the 2-1 to one halftime lead. Let's take a look at...
some of the action from an end to end first half. Georgetown territorially the better team. And early it was some moments where the Hoyas weren't quite sharp in the attacking third like that service from O'Hearn and that missed opportunity by Beer. But then Georgetown able to move it through Dotson, the shot by McCabe, right to the foot of Lochner, and Ethan Lochner's second goal of the year got the Hoyas to a one nothing lead. And there you see a great piece of attacking, and it actually it was Lochner's second of the year, and Dotson, such a clean effort, and Lochner making no mistake. And just when you thought the Hoyas would cruise to the victory, a turnover and a blast from Nunez, and Nunez saw Marcinkowski off his line and made no mistake. And Georgetown did what they needed to do. A first touch from McCabe, saw Heim cheating to his right. And that ball from Montez was so brilliant because it gave McCabe options with both feet. That's the diagonal ball that unlocks the defense. And so that goal from McCabe is the difference. 2-1 Georgetown. So after all that action, the stats show the story, which is Georgetown territorial dominance. Uh, more than two to one shot advantage, corner kicks equal, fouls about equal. And I'd say, you know, a 75-25 possession advantage for the Hoyas. Marquette, though, has some dynamic players in the midfield, and you will certainly see the likes of Alba and Purpa trying to probe that Georgetown defense and, and find the equalizer. We'll see what Louis Bennett and the Golden Eagles have in store in the second half in five minutes when we return to live action to Shawfield. Georgetown 2, Marquette 1. This is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Just one night. 
You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University. Be the difference. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Moments away from the restart of action, Biggie soccer action here on the Biggie's Digital Network. Dan Helfrich enjoying the action from the press box at Shaw Field. And it's been an exciting start to the Biggie soccer season. And in fact, the two teams at the top of those standings, Butler and St. John's, playing tonight. And it'll be those Butler Bulldogs coming to Shaw Field next Friday on the Big East Digital Network for an important contest against these Hoyas. Meanwhile, a punched, a bunch pack in the middle um, with Xavier Creighton, Villanova, and Marquette, all with a win already, Seton Hall rounding out the standings. Marquette's next Big East contest will be against the Providence Friars. Providence picked to win the conference to start the season. A bit of a slow start for the squad from Rhode Island. And now back to what's transpired here in Washington, D.C. today. It was an early goal by Ethan Lochner off the rebound of a shot by Jacob Montez after a good bit of work down the right side from Derek Dotson. And then a turnover by Georgetown led to Diego Nunez making no mistake from 14 yards out. That tied the game at one. But then in the 16th minute, McCabe staked Georgetown to its well-deserved one goal advantage, taking a diagonal through ball from Montez and beating Heim low to the near post. So Montez with Two assists on the afternoon. McCabe and Lochner, the goal scorers. And Montez now leading the team in assists with four on the season in his freshman year. And Marquette, we'll see if they think they found something in the last eight to ten minutes of that half when the field started to tilt a little more in the Golden Eagles direction as Purpa, Alba, Segrist and Krozel had more of the ball and the Golden Eagles looked more dangerous. And Marquette a little late coming onto the field here. And Brendan Skinner will gather his teammates before the half starts. And indeed, the substitute Krozel will start the second half for Marquette. Meanwhile, let's set the lineup for Georgetown. It'll be Marcinkowski in the net. It'll be the same back four, Sean O'Hearn on the left, Peter Schrapp and Brendan McDonough in the center of the back, and Dylan Nilos on the right side. It'll be Lochner and Montez at the outside midfield positions, Lemma and Zayats in the middle of the field, and Dotson and McCabe up front as we look at JT Marcinkowski. So that's the original starting lineup for the Hoyas back to start the second half. Meanwhile, a few different lineup insertions for Louis Bennett, and you see Noah Heim, the goalkeeper, making his first appearance of the year in front of normal starter Barasa. Now Skinner wide to Bame. Bame, the right back, who's gone the distance here for the Golden Eagles. Heim pressured by McCabe. He'll clear with his left foot looking for Segrist. McDonough steps in front of Nunez. And again, Marquette needs to find the feet of Alba and Purpa if they're going to probe this Georgetown defense. Didn't see much of that until the closing minutes of the first stanza. C. 
Segrist can't connect with Owens. And Georgetown will go all the way back to Marcinkowski. The neon highlighter goalkeeper uniform. McDonough early ball looking for Dotson who was bright in his minutes in the first half. Confident header by the substitute senior Jack Alberts. Now Sanchez who had a lot of ball in the first half. Perpa. Now Alba to Perpa. That's what Marquette can do in the middle of the park. Perpa those ball played behind Segris and that'll allow Georgetown to recover. Early here in the second half at Shaw. A one goal lead, certainly a bit nerve wracking. It's fun to see Georgetown at halftime honor members of the 2012 N national runner up team at halftime. As the Hoyas celebrate the fifth year of that amazing run to the College Cup. A game that ended 1-0 to current national soccer number one Indiana in the last national championship for the Hoosiers. McCabe's going to force Heim. Heim does not like that right foot, and you saw it there. McCabe knew it, and so he pressured him and forces a turnover. O'Hearn to McCabe. They miscommunicate. And it'll be a throw in for the Golden Eagles. Bame with it, in front of his own bench. Forced backwards by Zayats. But the Burley Bame, the junior from Germany, a transfer from Florida International, able to win the throw. And then Lemo whistled for a foul against Krozel. Exciting soccer action on the Big East Digital Network all fall long. Here's Alba, top of the box. Wide to Segrist. Near the corner flag, he'll retrieve. Runners in the box. We'll see if Alba finds him. Instead, he clips the ball to the back post. And Marcinkowski confidently off his line to grab. And then he'll launch the counterattack early to Lochner. The speedy junior out of the Red Bulls system. Now to O'Hearn. Lemma will calm things down. McDonough out wide. Nealis finds McCabe in a crease. L Lochner wants it. McCabe will find him. Lochner one on one where he's very dangerous. Lochner to the end line. Lochner, the service is blocked. And it'll be a corner kick. Good piece of stand up defending there by Stefan Bame. Good alert play by McCabe here as McCabe picked up his head and found Lochner. And Declan McCabe's confidence growing. As the season progresses, be the fourth corner of the game from the left foot of Christopher Lemma. It's Lemma. Near post run, easily cleared by the Golden Eagles. Now Alba to Owens. Owens looking for Nunez. Lochner in an unfamiliar position to defend, but he and Marcinkowski combine well. And little things matter, and you see the composure of Marcinkowski there to keep the ball instead of just launching it forward. It's excellent with his feet. Early ball finds McCabe. Declan wards off his defender. And they'll whistle Sanchez for a foul. Leland Grant, the center official here on Shaw Field. Take a look at Louis Bennett.
Bennett in his 12th season at Marquette. McCabe against Crozel. Crozel forces a turnover. And then foul whistled and Lemma and Leland Grant will have a word with one another. Chris Lemma is going to go into the referee's notebook. It wasn't that foul. It was the foul we just missed there on the replay. As Alba looks no worse for wear. So Lemma's caution for the second time this season. Marquette elects to play quickly and putting themselves under considerable pressure. Sanchez peels out of it well. And then Nutmeg's Lemma combination play. And referee and the assistant referee disagreeing. It'll be a Marquette throw. Georgetown coach Brian Weiss did either the Samba or the Merengue there. Incredible footwork disagreeing with that call. Meanwhile, Purpa cutting inside. Sees an overlap he likes. Early ball just past the foot of Diego Nunez as Luca Purpa did a terrific job finding Segris down the left side. And Georgetown struggling to deal with Purpa. And it was a good ball by Segris. And Owens can't believe that he and the Golden Eagles didn't find the equalizer. And it's interesting, little things like a missed throw-in call, and it clearly was missed, occasionally do lead to chances. Early ball, Shrop trying to find McCabe. He'll lay off to O'Hearn. O'Hearn, little back heel. Now Lochner into a crease to McCabe, but Marquette intercedes, and now the counter through Alba, who's been quite active for the last 30 or so minutes of game action. Just eight minutes into the second half. 2-1 the score. McCabe and Lochner, the goal scorers, both off assists from Jacob Montez. Nunez, the goal scorer for Marquette. Lochner at speed into the teeth of the defense, looking for the run and finding the run of Dotson. He and Bain battling for it. Dotson's going to win that battle. Good strength from the freshman. Now he'll cut inside, looking for a run. Good, calm possession. Now O'Hearn. Dotson with it, 20 yards from goal. To his left side. Dotson finds Lochner. Ethan still with it in the box. And Heim off his line to collect as Lochner and Dodson doing good work attacking the right side of Marquette's defense. Big Dis Natalis celebration anniversary day for the women of Georgetown tomorrow. Their 25th year of soccer on the hilltop being celebrated by last year's Big East champions. Schropp heads to Marcinkowski confidently as Nunez, the goal scorer, was lurking. Those two, Schropp and Marcinkowski, friends and teammates for many years in various youth national team setups. Certainly a big part of each choosing to attend the university. Schropp from a Long family lineage of Hoyas, the Omaha native. Here's Montez's first touch of the second half, and he can't connect with Nealis. Not much rhythm to this game since the restart of play. Dotson trying to find Lemma and does. Lemma to Lochner. Can't connect with McCabe. 
Lochner, poor first touch. He'll collect it, though. Now to Dotson, who sees a run he likes from Nealis. It's a good ball. Lots of runners for Dylan Nealis, but instead, his service very errant, and it'll be a goal kick. Both these teams one and one on the conference season. And that's all Marquette has to play for after their tough start in non-conference play. Meanwhile, Georgetown superb in non-conference play. Six one and one on the year. Neil is a good ball to Lochner. Lochner one and one against Bame. Early ball from Lochner. And a good bit of defending from Skinner to clear. And it'll be a corner kick taken by Chris Lemma. Lemma taking the corner kick in front of the beginning of construction for some facilities near Shaw Field, which will be a great addition for the coaches and teams. Looping service at the back post. Ball falls to Montez, top of the box. Montez, a driven shot, and Heim saves it. Montez got over that ball well. Crozel gets behind Lochner. Really liked what I've seen from Crozel, number eight, the substitute. Heim on his less preferred right foot and again turns it over. Here's Dotson. Tries to find Zayats. That connection missed. O'Hearn now to Lochner, who's been busy in the second half. Lochner early ball, easily cut out there by Skinner as the Hoyas not connecting on their services early in the second half. Hoyas reset, now Zayats. Lochner, good strength. He and Bame battle. Marquette, the beneficiary. And Sanchez elects to reset through the goalkeeper. Albers, he and Purpa combining. Marquette and Georgetown, both content to let the game slow a bit. Sliding tackle by Montez wins it, and then a clinical foul by Purpa on McCabe. Luca Purpa, the sophomore, earned every bit of this yellow card. <sighs> Flipping the knees of McCabe. So both central midfielders. Purpa for the Golden Eagles there and Lemma for the Hoyas in the referee's notebook here in the second. Here's Peter Schropp. The junior, it's a fellow junior center back, McDonough, an important pairing for the Hoyas. McDonough looking to find Dotson, an acrobatic header wide. And the Hoyas will win a corner as a result, as Neil has won that corner. And the skill from Derek Dotson to rise above and head that ball out wide. A subtle but very athletic piece of soccer there from the freshman. Lemma to take the Hoyas sixth corner of the day. Looping ball to the back post. Nobody there but Purpa. His clearance goes straight up in the air. O'Hearn does well to play it back out wide to Lemma. Georgetown's defender still forward in the box. Schropp 
heads it, and it'll be a goal kick. Peter Schrapp suspended in air there as he tried to get to that service from Lemma. And Lemma, you see him bending that ball nicely to the back post. But Skinner did enough, Bame rather did enough to disrupt Schrapp there, and no harm done to the Golden Eagles. Skinner nearly dispossessed by Lochner. And then McCabe whistled for a foul. Marquette very fortunate that Dotson did not win that ball. Segrist finds Purpa. Back to Segrist. Less than 30 minutes remain. Segrist looked for Owens. And Owens, a forearm shiver to Peter Schrapp that the referee caught. And so it'll be a restart for Georgetown. As Coach Brian Weiss summons two substitutions for the next stoppage in play. It looks like it'll be Jack Beer and Achara both returning to the match. Again, for those just joining, Achara back for the first time since September 9th. Played 20 minutes in the first. I'm sure the coaches would like to get him another 10 or 15 in the second as the Hoyas look to get their leading goal scorer and one of the nation's biggest threats back into form and fitness. Nealis early ball looking for Dotson. Dotson's footwork not good enough there. Nealis spied the run. It was a good early ball. And indeed it is Beer and Achara entering for Lochner and McCabe. As you get a good look at the Nigerian. And we'll see Achar and Dodson together for the first time today. That pairing in limited minutes together this year has looked dangerous. Nealis' early ball looking for Achara. Easily headed away by Albers. Now Sanchez. Poor ball intercepted by Nealis. And the Hoyas will look to keep possession here. Montez, who's assisted on both goals for Georgetown. Not able to find much of the ball here early as the Hoyas have preferred the left side in the second half. And here's Krozel. Krozel against the freshman Beer, senior versus freshman. The senior gets the end line, clips a dangerous early ball. It's in the box. Marquette screaming for a handball, still loose in the box, and now finally cleared. And Louis Bennett has both hands over his head as he thought there was a handball. Meanwhile, Achara's trying to get behind Skinner. He can't. But Achara then fouled by Skinner. And the referee's going to stop the clock. And madness is Leland Grant involved in the action. The referee on both sides of the pitch. As Marquette screaming for a handball on this play. And indeed, it looked like that may have hit the outstretched right arm of Brendan McDonough. Perhaps twice. First with his right, then with his left. And then on the other end, Skinner cautioned for his foul on Achara. Based on this move here. I think Achara at full fitness probably gets by Skinner there, but as he went back to retrieve the ball, he certainly was tugged down. So Marquette screaming for the handball call, and they probably had reasons to do so. Lemma, looping ball to the back post, headed away, but right to Beer, Beer a shot! And it looked like it was tipped by Heim. The action picking up here at Shaw as Jack Beer nearly opened up his college soccer scoring account. The first ball won by Marquette, but Beer in the perfect place to hit that, and indeed Heim did tip that over. Georgetown very fortunate to not concede a penalty on the other end, and then Beer nearly made it 3-1. Early ball headed out by Segrist. Beer gets to it again, and he'll hit it over for a goal kick. So in the 65th minute of play, the action certainly intensifying.
Goal scorers today, McCabe and Lochner for Georgetown. Nunez for the visiting market, Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles certainly have conceded more possession today, but towards the tail end of the, sec the first half, and at certainly in moments of this second half, they've looked at least dangerous enough to think that an equalizer may be coming, and no chance better than just moments ago where Alba's shot appeared to hit the right hand of Brendan McDonough. Tackle one by Zayats. Poor ball. It's Owens, Marquette's leading goal scorer. He'll find Segrist. Now it's Purpa, and the tackle made by McDonough. Good defending there by the Charlotte, North Carolina native. Meanwhile, Dotson against Albers. Dotson fouled hard by Albers. The assistant referee said the ball was out of bounds. <sighs> Meanwhile, Albers getting a talking to for this right shoulder shiver, but it's not a caution. <sighs> Marquette attacking through Bame. Now Crozel. And Crozel fouled by O'Hearn. Right in front of Georgetown's Brian Weiss. Head coach in his second decade here on the Hilltop. He and Bennett coming into the Big East Conference at just about the same time. Achara. Cuts inside, leaves it for Beer. Beer sees a run from Montez. He'll find him in traffic. Montez lets it go to his right foot. Montez shot blocked nicely by Albers. Meanwhile, Nealis tries to get to it. Albers shows skill to get by him. Good combination between the two freshmen for George on Jack Beer and Jacob Montez. Montez already with two assists on the day. Boy, would he love to have a goal. Marcinkowski and Aaron Clarence. Nearly halfway through the second half. It's Segrist with a run of speed, who nearly returned it to Purpa, who wanted that pass. Now Montez finds the feet of Achara. He'll lay off as the Hoyas slow things down. Zayats will reclaim possession. Now Marcinkowski. O'Hearn bothered by Crozel. Brody Crozel does well to win it. Now Beer to Shrop. Higher pressure now for Marquette. Georgetown defenders having a little difficulty dealing with the higher pressure. Meanwhile, Dotson does well to win it. Achara finds Beer. Beer on a dead sprint against Bame. Early ball to Achara. Oh, and Achara gets tangled up in his own feet as he had a chance off the good return pass from Beer. Now Beer to the corner flag. Battling for it. One on two against Albers and Crozel. And the experienced senior for Marquette wins a goal kick. And Achara, the rust evident here as he returns to action for the first time since early September. But so important for the Hoyas to have the Nigerian striker, the sophomore, back in their lineup. But just the game plan to defend Georgetown, the scouting report's so different when you have to deal with the elite pace of the sophomore. Here's Purpa. Purpa top of the box, trying to get back to his preferred left foot. And a sliding tackle from Montez. Good two-way play from the freshman. As you saw, Purpa really trying to get back to that left foot to have a strike from inside the 20-yard mark from goal. Meanwhile, Nealis on the right side. Nealis one-on-one against Segrist. Segrist has defended very adeptly here this afternoon. Interesting to see 
tactically what types of substitutions each coach turns to in the last 20 minutes of this game. Again, Dan Helfrich enjoying the action here on the Big East Digital Network from Shaw Field. Flying solo here in the Shaw Field press box. Here's Krozel. Look forward to being joined by my announcing partner, Tom Greaser, next weekend as the Hoyas take on Butler on the Big East Digital Network on Friday. A battle between Montez and Segrist. It'll be a goal kick for Georgetown. And that Butler will commence an interesting uh, two game in four day Columbus Day weekend for the Hoyas as they'll take on Duke on Monday. So Butler on Friday, Duke on Monday, two teams ranked in the top 20 of the RPI. Duke with an identical 6-1-1 one one record as the Hoyas right now. But right now, Georgetown and Marquette have their attention focused on the last 20 minutes of this contest, each looking to move to 2-1 and one in the Big East Conference season. Dotson the layoff to Nealis. Now Beer to Dotson. Great ball from Dotson to O'Hearn. O'Hearn, a positive touch. Finds Dotson. Dotson top of the box, trying to get to his right foot. He likes to go backwards to Montez. Montez sees Heim cheating, goes over everything, but can't connect. And Georgetown not able to do much with that opportunity. Meanwhile, O'Hearn and Ocharo work to win it. Ocharo ball to the back post, looking for Montez. Headed away by Owens. Georgetown not able to generate anything attacking-wise. Shrop to Beer and a seam. Now Zayat's one-touch ball to Dotson. Well defended by Albers. Now O'Hearn looks for Dotson. Heim thought about coming out instead, does not, and it's hit out of bounds by Skinner. Brendan Skinner, the junior Canadian, manning that central defense for the Golden Eagles. Cleared by Bame, right to Lemma. It's a great first touch from Chris Lemma to allow the Hoyas to continue to press. Here's Nealis, one on one, this time against Owen. This time he'll get by him. Nealis, dangerous ball, headed away by Bame. Dylan Nealis turned the corner for one of the first times today. Now Purpa concedes possession to Nealis. However, he can't keep it in play, and with 18 minutes remaining, both coaches conferring with their staffs about what might change the tide tactically here. Marquette clearly needing to find something more dangerous in the attacking third. Georgetown would love to find the third goal. Again, four of the last six games between these teams has gone to overtime, including the tie last year in Wisconsin. Alba to Sanchez, who's gone the distance at that holding midfield position. Early ball is cleared by McDonough, looking for Achara against Segrist. Achara heads to himself. It's a good first touch. He sees Dotson, tries to play it in his path, but a poor weight on that pass, and Haim easily able to get it, Heim, the substitute goalkeeper, is the usual starter, Luis Barasa, unable to go today. Krozel, positive combination play with Alba. Krozel in a dangerous spot. Oh, and Krozel fouled by O'Hearn as their feet got tripped up. I think that was more like incidental contact, but the guile of the senior Krozel giving. Marquette a chance in this very dangerous spot, and indeed, O'Hearn did clip his right foot, and so the proper call there, and what a dangerous opportunity for Purpa, and you know, Tom Greaser and I often talk about this type of opportunity. It is ideal for a left-footed player here, and Marcin Kelsey has a lot to consider, as Purpa certainly could shoot this 
or try to clip a dangerous ball into the back post where there is a sea of humanity. Just a four-man wall, a big moment here. Purpa steps up, it is a shot and it's over. And Purpa will be frustrated as on the training ground, that's one he likes to certainly at least get on goal. And so Brian Weiss will be the first to go to his bench as Mason, Mason enters. So there are three subs actually, McCabe and Mason enter, as does Lochner. So it'll be Mason on the left side of midfield, Lochner on the right side of midfield, McCabe up front with Achara. Dotson getting his first break of the second half. Just 15 and a half minutes remain. Can Segrist and the Golden Eagles find another quality chance? Here's Sanchez. He'll return to Segrist. It's a good ball. But Lochner forces the sophomore backwards. Here's Bame. Marquette has played without Stepanchik for the entire second half. We'll see if he's able to go later. Segrist looping ball to the back post. Marcinkowski lets it go as he was confident it was going to head out of play. For those wondering, the likely goal scorers for Marquette were they to get one on. Owens leads the team with three goals on the season, wearing the number 17 in blue and yellow. Nunez has already scored today, and then Stepanchik, worried to re-enter, scored two goals last weekend, his first two of the year, as Marquette defeated Seton Hall. And a foul whistle by Mason. And again, the Hoyas won't be happy to concede free kicks in the attacking third, because what's going to happen, and you see Bennett signaling all his defenders to get forward, Instead, Purpa goes early as Crowell got behind the defense. Crowell against Mason, one-on-one. -on -one. Crowell will get to the end line. Service to the back post. Traffic there. Headed in front. Trap clears. Nunez is there. Purpa still battling for it. And then finally cleared by Lemma. Danger, danger lurking as Purpa intelligently found Crowell. And he has been the most dangerous attacking player all afternoon. Brody Crossell. <sighs> and we have a stoppage in play as Skinner wants to stretch out a bit. Play restarts quickly. As we enter the 77th minute of play. Bame sees a good run. Nunez, terrific layoff to Purpa. He'll find Segrist. Overlap from Alba coming. Alba against Nealis. Good service and cleared off the line by Peter Schropp. And what an athletic play by Peter Schropp. As Purpa again switching the play. And that ball looked like it was headed to the back post side netting. And it was the right foot of Peter Schropp, which he only saves for special occasions like that, which kept the ball out of the net. And Marquette continuing to impress as they look for the equalizer, here's Mason. 
Zayat's good one-time ball to Lemma, who frees O'Hearn. O'Hearn sees runners. O'Hearn looking for Achara, but it's headed out by Skinner. The quality of the service from the Georgetown wide players has not been premium today. Here is one of those wide players, Dylan Nealis. Nealis' brother Jimmy in the stands today, the stalwart left back on that 2012 championship contending team for Georgetown who was honored at halftime. Marquette will watch the video of this second half and certainly see plenty of opportunities. Meanwhile, turnover, it's Achara top of the box. Achara's going to shoot, and it trickles wide off the deflection. And Marquette's going to see a handball in thought should have been awarded as Achara decides to let one go from the top of the box. Didn't actually miss by much, and Marquette will certainly look at that last shot from Alba that was cleared off the line by Schropp. Louis Bennett has to be Certainly excited about what he's seen from his team against the heavily favored Hoyas. Lemma, back post, Schropp heads straight up in the air. It's cleared, but ends up at the foot of Lemma. Lemma, early ball, bounding around in traffic. And Bame finally clears. Georgetown not able to get anything directed at Heim here in the second half. Drop back post looking for Achara. He was offsides, but the ref will allow play to continue. Please stay with us after the game. We'll have a live on the field interview with the winning coach. Assuming there is a winner. And if Marquette doesn't find a goal in these last 10 minutes, it will be the Hoyas and Brian Weiss. Here's Bame, disrupted by McCabe on a clean tackle. And then we'll call that a pin for wrestling fans. That was a three-point pin. I'm not sure if there's such a thing as a three-point pin, but if there is, that was it. Meanwhile, Georgetown attacking down the right side. It's Lochner. A smart switch from Zayats finds the feet of Schropp. Mason against Krozel. Mason, an early ball. It's a good one. Lochner gets to it first, but his shot is deflected. Achara onside retrieving. Achara to the end line. Achara clips the ball in, and Heim off his line to confidently grab. We wondered if Louis Bennett would summon the captain Stepanchik. The answer is yes. And Stepanchik will enter at the next dead ball. Daniel, the redshirt senior. Krozel, the other redshirt senior, has been excellent here this afternoon. And they'll win a throw in. It'll allow both teams to perhaps make their last substitutions of the game. It'll be Nunez exiting for Marquette and Achara exiting for Georgetown. Stepanchik and Dotson back in the game. Under eight minutes to play. McCabe's goal, which broke the deadlock in the 16th minute, still the difference. As Chris Lemma wins the ball to Dotson. Good layoff to McCabe. Skinner tried to tackle Dotson, didn't succeed. Now McCabe against Sanchez, still battling. McCabe wins it. Great skill from the senior. McCabe cuts to his right foot. McCabe lays it off. Lemma shot off the post. Rebound, Dotson cleared. And Chris Lemma somehow denied as the post was unkind. But what a bit of composure by Declan McCabe as he picks out McCabe. And it was an outstanding save by Heim getting his fingertips to that ball. 
And then Dotson could not finish the rebound. But what composure by Declan McCabe to find Lemma. And Lemma would have loved to have found his third of the year. But instead, Marquette breathes another breath. Dotson lays to Lochner. Now Nealis. Perhaps more of a track meet than the Hoyas staff would have liked in the second half. As Georgetown protecting a, a one goal lead. Though I think the staff would tell you they think it ought to have been two. And so six and a half minutes remain on the clock. Good turn from Lochner finds Neal is still attacking. McCabe calling for the ball. McCabe gets it. And a sliding left-footed effort over everything. And I've seen a lot of the games in Declan McCabe's career. I might call this the best game of his Georgetown career. And there he is. The Weston, Massachusetts Rivers School product. Played some time in the New England Revolution Academy. Lemo wins a challenge. Now Dotson battles for it. Dotson wins it. He's tackled by Alba. Play on. Lemo with it. Lemo cuts to shot by McCabe. Sprinkles wide. And now Alba probably will have a conversation with Leland Grant for this attempted takedown. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coach Brian Weiss with 5.34 remaining on the clock will make two substitutions. It'll be Lochner and Mason exiting. It'll be Jacob Montez re-entering and Edson Martinez as well. Martinez, who often comes in the center of the park in situations like this, is actually going to be stationed out left. And I think part of that is to deal with the dynamic Krosel of Marquette. Plenty of action here in this two to one game again. Stay with us after the game as we talk to the winning coach. Here's Dotson, who'd love to make this a win for Weiss. Dotson to McCabe. McCabe is onside but can't retrieve. He'll go back to Martinez. Edson looks up. Edson to his left foot. Over everything to Montez. And again, Georgetown not turning what appear to be promising counterattacks into anything dangerous in front of Heim. Here's Sanchez. Now Krozel. The double team between Martinez and Lemma forces backwards. Good turnover. Zayats finds McCabe. It's two on four, however, so the senior goes backwards to Montez. Montez sees Do Dotson. Dotson looked like he was fouled. The referee says no. And it was a shoulder-to-shoulder -sh shoulder challenge between Albers and Dotson. And I think a good piece of officiating there to let the play go on. It was a crafty ball to try to find Dotson. McCabe will turn against Sanchez. And he'll win the free kick, allowing time to move off the clock. Dotson chest down in front of Albers. Those two exchanging pleasantries throughout the second half. Zayat's looking for McCabe in the corner. Declan McCabe, a terrific afternoon. Play on, says the referee, after McCabe nutmegged his defender and then fell. Under three minutes. Now Bame. Bame gets in front of Martinez and Edson 
conceding just what the Georgetown staff did not want. A foul in the attacking half that allows Marquette to send Albers forward. It allows Marquette to send Skinner forward. And Purpa loves the opportunity to clip a ball in here. He does. It's a ball to the back post. Mark Sinkowski off his line as that ball floated and hung in the air long enough for Georgetown's junior captain to grab. Georgetown's junior captain also smart enough to know how to let time run off the clock. But that time he hits it out of play. And that'll give time for Marquette to make two very late game substitutions. Albello re-enters the Alexandria, Virginia product. And the first time today we're going to see Jordan Palmer, the Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin native. <laughs> McCabe, a good layoff to Martinez. Martinez, good skill. And then he concedes the ball. Palmer wins it. Purpa has it. 90 seconds remain. It's Segrist. Segrist has gone the entire game today at left midfield. Now it's Albello, recent reentry. The dangerous Krosel gets by O'Hearn. Krosel to the end line. His cross is blocked. It lands at the feet of Alba. Alba clips the ball to the back post. Neil, a strong athletic move to rise above to win it. And then a foul whistled on Palmer as the clock ticks down to just 60 seconds remaining. On the Big East Digital Network, it's been a good one this afternoon. And Leland Grant gives Marcinkowski a yellow card for time wasting and the Georgetown staff, as upset as I've seen them, there hasn't been a warning before that. And again, Marcinkowski receiving yellow cards in consecutive games as he was cautioned last week on the foul that led to the penalty kick against DePaul. Martinez, a good touch to Dotson. Dotson will go to the corner flag smartly. We'll see the strength from the freshman. He battles Albello and Skinner near the corner flag. And then a foul on Dodson. Marquette will send everyone forward with less than 40 seconds remaining on the clock. It's Albers. Now Palmer. It's a good ball. Good layup from Stepanchik to Segrist. 18 seconds to go. Early ball looking for Owens. Marcinkowski off his line. He'll grab it, and that will do it. And Georgetown, on the strength of goals from Ethan Lochner and Declan McCabe, able to get out of home field, keeping its home record perfect on the afternoon and extending their season record to 7-1-1. One one. Meanwhile, Marquette falls to 1-7-1. and one. An entertaining game on the Big East Digital Network. It's Dan Helfrich. It's been fun to call it for you. Remember, stay with us as we talk to head coach Brian Weiss in the postgame and recap the action. Georgetown moves to 7-1-1, one, 2-1 one, one in the conference.
Hallelujah. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University. Be the difference. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Dan Helfrich back at Shaw Field. A 2-1 victory for the Hoyas, joined by head coach Brian Weiss. And Brian, uh, despite a lot of success in the rivalry between Georgetown and Marquette over the years, it's rarely easy, and today was no different. No, I, you know, they, they've had a, a tough run of it with some results, um, and, and I think they've got some injuries they're dealing with. And But it's the biggest game. It doesn't matter who you're playing. I think there's a lot of parity in this league, and, um, uh, Marquette's uh, got some pretty special players that cause you problems. It, you know, our their, their ability to play and try to build out of the back and our ability to try to press them was pretty was pretty interesting for us today. Actually, I thought they did a, a much better job of, of playing out of the back than we did of pressing. Brian, talk about the partnership between Dotson and McCabe, you know, two, two players who've been important throughout the year but who've been, you know, on and off, in and out of the starting lineup today. It looked like they combined quite a bit and obviously – Declan, uh, an important finish to for the game winner. Yeah, I, it, it's a little bit of a necessity because of the injuries we had to, to, to Zach Knudsen and Achara up front. That, that's been our starting pair. And, and these guys have been filling in uh, really, really well. And I think Declan's been playing like a senior. I think over the last two or three games, he's been making big, big plays to get us results. And, and today's a really good example of, of, of him just being an older guy, a mature guy. And, and Dodson's been a really, really fun player to, to, to be injecting into our lineup. He's playing incredibly maturely, and, and he doesn't look like a freshman at all when he's with, with the way he's thinking and, and how he's executing a lot of uh, a really good play up front. And Brian, we know you're rarely satisfied, but I think you start the season and said you'd be 7-1-1 and one and one midway through the year. You might have smiled. Talk about the second half of the year and the kinds of adjustments uh, you and the staff will be working on as you prepare for what hopefully is uh, quite a long season. Yeah, I, it, it's it's such a uh, it's a long season. And it's a quick season. The games come really fast. They 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 um, they, they fire in quick and and uh, you know I think uh, this is exactly halfway I think through the season for us. Um, and I think we've handled a lot of different situations and we're growing up as a team. Um, it's a long way to go and and a lot of really hard games we got coming up for us. Um, uh, you know, so just finding ways to win, finding ways to win with different ways and, and having different players be prepared to step up and make plays um, as, as we evolve. And, you know, I think um, uh, th there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of growth to still be had in this team, and I think that's the exciting part for us is that I think we can get a lot better still. Well, congrats, Brian, on win number 131 of your career, and we'll see you next Friday against Butler back here on the Big East Digital Network. All right, thanks, Dan. So it was an outstanding Big East Conference match, the third game of the conference season for both teams, Georgetown. It took goals from Lochner and Declan McCabe, the senior, to defeat the one goal of Nunez and the Marquette Golden Eagles. And so the Hoyas go to 2-1 and one in the conference season, 7-1-1 one one in the year. Marquette 1-2 one and two in the conference, 1-7-1 one one on the year. Back next Friday on the Big East Digital Network.